Hans, yesterday was a terrible uh, day for you, and today you start out with a masterpiece. How would you summarize it? Chess speaks for itself. <laughs> Is it something special doing this against my innocence? <laughs> Oh my gosh, what is wrong with Hans? Why is he so angry? He's so angry. It's so weird. I, I don't even get it. Like he wins a nice game and he's just like, he's, he's just angry. I don't know what's wrong with him. Okay, what do we have? C5 being played here. We got knight to f3. Pawn takes, knight takes, knight c6. Bishop b5 is played. Bishop b7 takes, takes bishop d3. Bishop d6, queen e2. Fairly standard. Um, what do we have here? I mean, it's double-edged, though, because black also gets pushed like c4, knight c6. A lot of pressure in the center of the board here. Um, okay, Hans allows us capture and basically just ends up in a worse position here where black has an amazing wooden shield. What a wooden shield. Look at this bishop on e5. Just a perfect wooden shield. Now we get queen e2, queen c7. Again, classic move. He threatens both bishop b2 and bishop h2 here. And this does just looks very, very good for black. We get g3, bishop b2. And now Hans is just down a pawn, and, and Magnus probably convinced us very convincingly. Let's keep going. Plays this ending, really. But I guess... Hmm, problem is your pieces are kind of stuck here. And eventually Magnus just wins us quite convincingly, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Check, and then rook a2. Very clean technique. Very, very clean technique. So let's get back to the third game now. Uh, whoa, what What just... Knight f4 takes king f2? Wow. Um, This looks uh different, shall we say? <laughs> he goes king f2. He's probably going to go like king g2 and bishop e2 or bishop d3. If black can go e5 at some point, black is going to be better here. In fact, I'm wondering why e5 here isn't just, just better. Well, I guess actually it's not black's move, but I feel like there's going to be some e5 and black will be doing well. Did I already react to Han's interview? Yeah, I mean, the chest speaks for itself, right? Chest speaks for itself. It's just that simple, that easy. So, yeah. All right, what do we have here? By the way, I really do like Rune Terra. Um, I really do like the game, so I'll probably play it more, actually, on stream. No reason not to. If you like a game and it's a little bit of a break from, from the nonstop chest, then, then might as well, so... Yeah, we'll see. But anyway, it is what it is. All right. Who got annoyed after losing? Magnus? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm. Hearthstone next? Who knows? I just have a sandwich that I got um got from got, got from the store yesterday. I just bought some stuff, threw it all together with some bread from uh, from Walmart, of course. Great, 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 a uh, great place, by the way. What can I say? Yeah. What can I say? Amazing. All right. Um, waiting on a move from uh from Magnus here, I guess. Or do we, no, we have moved. Sorry, King G two castles G four played here. So, oh my gosh, E five is just winning for Black, by the way. E5 is minus two according to the computer. Like I said, if black can play E5, it should be very good. Yeah. Yeah, Magnus is literally disrespecting Hans in this game. Um, kind of, but on the other hand, kind of not. I mean, A3 is not a bad move, but playing playing uh playing this whole F3 thing is a little bit much because you're basically in a slob, except the pawns on A3, so you've already wasted one tempo here. Uh, are those headsets comfortable? I was thinking of getting a pair. You could. Um, anyway. Yeah. Let's see. What country delivered the best chess players in history? Up to this moment, it is currently, uh, it is currently uh, the the former Soviet Union, uh, also known as the land of the invasions. Um, they are, uh, they, they, they currently are, are have the, I, I think still they have the most grandmasters, but I will say in the next 30 years, I'll, I'll say this, in the next 30 years, I think we're going to come to view India as the preeminent superpower in the game of chess. I will say that right now. I'm going to be, I'm going to be blunt about that. I think that in, um, that within the next 20, in like 20 years from now, or even maybe 10 years from now, we're going to look at India as being like the, the best chess country. And as I've said before, 100%, maybe not 100%, let's just say 99 
0.1% probably of the credit goes to none other than Vishy Anand, the former world chess champion, for what he's helped establish in the country of India. Um, I would say, I, I mean, obviously I'm being a little bit facetious when I say 99%, but I think um, I think it's like, it's all Vichy. But actually I saw a thread the other day and it reminded me um, that before Vichy, there was also this very strong, um, there was this very strong uh, Indian I Indian international master by the name of Manuel Aaron. He, he basically became an international, I think in like the 1950s or the 1960s. He did a lot for chess. He created, I think the first publication, which was called, I believe, Chessmate, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so some credit has to go to him. He was like the first I am. I think it was like the only I am in India for like, 30 years or something it was insane until Vichy came along and then I think Barua he was literally the best player and and I mean as an I am that's obviously great but compared to the fact there were GMs and everything else um like it, it, he probably deserves a, a fair chunk of credit too um for sort of being one of the original pioneers but beyond that I mean it's all the credit goes to goes to Vichy 100 percent um without a doubt do I ever feel that the U.S. will be up there um you know, as far as the U.S. goes, I think it's possible. Uh, there are a lot more homegrown talents. We get E5, G5 here. Okay, so the question is, what will happen if Hans doesn't win this game? It's a big question. Because Hans, you're not confused. Magnus is basically doing the I don't care, I, I literally don't care approach in, in these games. Um, and he's just playing total rubbish here in the third game. Um, so where was I? I was saying something. I was saying, yeah, so as far as the U.S. goes, you have a lot of up-and-coming juniors. Uh, it's probably the first time in a very long time that's the case. You know, if I go back in history, like when I was up-and-coming, um, there really weren't many other juniors who I thought had chance to become, like, top-level chess players. Um, and so it's very good because you have, like, Jeffrey Zhang, you have Sam Seven, you have Hans Niemann. Um, I feel like there's one other one I'm forgetting. Uh, maybe Mishra down the road again remains to be seen, but there are a lot of up and coming juniors, homegrown American players. So the future is bright, but we'll see if they actually make it again, though. Oh, there's also Christopher Yu as well. Yeah. But again, though, at the end of the day, the thing is you're talking about very few players. You're talking about like five to six players. Whereas in India, I honestly would say there probably are like 20 juniors who I think are amazing. Even Buddy Pranav, who's kind of, and again, re relaxes is not intended as like any anything negative. But if you look at like Buddy Pranav, he's like, he just broke GM. He's 16 years old. I think he'll be 2,600 plus. He's like down in the cellar in terms of Indian juniors. And yet he has a lot of potential too. And he's like number 20 or somewhere down there. So there's a lot of potential for Indian chess. So, yeah. Anyway, um, Zero American, just the name sounding like mercenaries. Um, there are homegrown talents, you guys. Jeffrey Jean, he grew up in Dallas, Texas. You have players like uh, Sam Sevian, who grew up in Boston, Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I can't do an accent because I, I don't know how those Boston people do it. And besides, frankly, nobody likes Boston. If you grew up in New York like I did, Red Sox suck. Yankees rule. Enough said. Move along. Um... But yeah, you have um, you you have uh, you've got you've got Sevian who grew up in Boston, Jeffrey who grew up in Dallas. You've got um, the Chowda is good. The Chowda is very good. I agree. Um, but then you have um, who is the other one? Um, Hans, who also of course Hans, obviously from New York as well. So yeah, I mean you you have you have people who grew up in the U.S. are doing they're playing great chess. What what to, what what to say? It's very uh, it's very very good. Yeah, very very good stuff. All right. He takes d4 played by Hans. Hans, by the way, down to 255. I was gonna say Magnus on top of doing showing the disrespect with a3. He's also he's also doing the classic Jan de Pomniachi, where he's just moving really, really fast. Really fast. Boston's got green beer. Um yeah. Anyway, all right, so waiting on a move, there's knight a4, there's also ed4. I would expect ed4, although knight a4, I'm guessing computer probably thinks the black is just winning because your king is terrible. Although maybe not, wait, what? Oh, because you can play b5 targeting the pony on the edge and the pony is trapped. Your pony can't go anywhere. Ah, that's the trick, okay. So he just takes, I mean, I, I honestly, the problem with this position for, for Magnus is that I don't even understand how Magnus is supposed to be okay. Thank you so much to X ignore my name for the prime. Queen d4, however, feels like a step maybe in the wrong direction. I think black's still much better, but I felt like maybe queen d8 made more sense. Knight e7, this terrible king. I have this bad feeling that, um, I have this bad feeling that somehow Magnus is going to eke out a draw. 
Because pieces are coming off the board. We're not under delay, you guys. No, no, we aren't. So, yeah. Later on, you guys, we will do our Reddit React. Of course, we'll do our Reddit React. We also have that video from um, the uh, on chess, which was uh, uh, why chess strategy changes every year. It was from the YouTube channel Half is Interesting, a channel with uh, nearly, I think, 3 million subs. So, yeah. Only chess streamer who doesn't play chess. What do you mean by that? I don't know what you mean. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to be attending the tournament Saturday. Are you going to be there? No, you guys. I um I, I won't be at the tournament. I, I don't know where it is. I actually generally don't like big crowds like in Miami. Again, Miami is a reminder of a different time in my life when I lived in New York um, where there's traffic, there's no space. It's always a nightmare parking. Ugh, all that stuff that I left behind years ago. And um, now I'm thing. are you going to lose weight a little? I'm completely fine, you guys. But thank you for the in, in Thank you for the insinuation. I'll, I'll make sure to go and uh, play like three hours of tennis tonight and just sweat through my clothes again for like the third time this week. Uh, thank you. All right, so what do we get? We get Rook B1 played here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Have I been to Beersheba? I've only been to Eilat and through the airport in Tel Aviv. That's that's where I've been. So, yeah. Uh, by the way, you guys, I, I also going to say I, there was an article I wanted to read about uh, Laurent Fresnay, who apparently is the first uh, chess tennis world champion. Thank you so much to Mom FOK for the 11 and gave a Torag for $500. Appreciate or for the $5. Sorry, thank you so much. Uh, can I update the Twitch VODs for subs? We have a command for that, you guys. We have XLAM VODs. Uh, XLAM VOD, and you will see what's going on with Twitch, etc. It is what it is. Um, anyway, yeah. All right. Is it my turn after this game? Oh, no. We have titled Tuesday. We're not playing in this event. We're not playing this event. Are you saying you're the best chess tennis player? No. The best chess tennis player is, of course, another streamer by the name of of, uh, of, of Mark uh, Mark Esserman. So he he is by far and away the best. Not even close, by the way. And to give you an example, it's like I remember when I, I've, I've hit with Esserman. He's probably even said this on a stream before. But um, Esserman, actually, I think when he was growing up in Florida, he I don't know if he actually played against Andy Roddick, but he was definitely in that age group and he, he knew of him. So like that, that's like that, that alone says it all. I mean, that alone says it all in terms of uh, how good he was. All right. Uh, Rick AC. Oh my gosh. By the way, you guys, computer says this is a draw. Computer says it's zeros. Magnus has swindled his way out. Now the question is Magnus has swindled his way out. Will Magnus find a way to win? He's up seven minutes in an end game and he's got the double op combo. Is, is Magnus going to find a way to win? Yeah. Yeah. This is the big question mark. Uh, this kid from my high school played Isner and Junior is nice, nice. So yeah. Anyway, okay, knight e6 played. Probably bishop e4, bishop e3. The big question is if, if Magnus somehow wins this game, you know that, you, you know, uh, if Hans played queen d8, I think he probably wins the game. I mean, I just, I don't like queen d4, even though it's still very good. I just don't like it because conceptually, look at this position. King is completely open here. I mean, barely okay because the bishop guards, but look at the pieces. One, two, three, four, five pieces on their original squares. No development here. Only one lone knight. Andrew King is way off here on the side. Fundamentally, based on fundamentals, this has to be very good for black. It just has to be because of lack of development. I mean, five pieces undeveloped here and also like weak square, weak dark squares as well. I mean, it just, if you look at the position, you, you should conceptually realize that. Um, but again, this is a rapid game, so you can't be like, can't be too critical about it. But it's just something to keep in mind that, like, when you're looking at positions, sometimes you have to look at it not purely from a material standpoint, but just look at this logically. Like, king is castled. Knight on h5 is going to f4. You've got great pieces that can be developed, and white has literally one piece that's developed. I guess you could say the king's king's developed too, since on g2. But yeah, I mean, that's you. Sometimes you have to think like that versus sort of bailing out here and thinking about the material. And I mean. I don't know if Magnus is going to win this game or not, but, you know, when Hans looks at this game, this is one of these games that's, like, very demoralizing if you play this against Magnus, because what more can you ask for? He literally, he plays A through on move one, pushes pawns from the king, moves the king to G2, and still he's going to escape. I still think it'll be a draw, but it's still very demoralizing. Like, he, you literally feel like, Hans, you literally feel like Magnus, like, okay, whatever, dude, win this game. And then you don't win the game, and you feel like, what, what, I can't even win with this position against Magnus? It's just, yeah, it's brutal. It, it is really quite brutal, to be honest. So, anyway. Okay, Bishop D2 played. Of course, Bishop D2 is the best move. Yeah, brutal. We have Hans under a minute, yeah. I think Hans is going to lose this game, you guys. 
I think Han's gonna lose this game, and he I don't know what he's gonna say. I, I have no idea what is he even gonna say. It's it's start it's starting, you guys. Look at the eval bar, it's creeping up slowly, slowly. I mean, it's like you you you, you can you can feel it coming. Like I, I don't e I mean I don't even have to know what the moves are, but you can feel it. It's like it's just gonna slowly get bigger and bigger, and then we're gonna get a big wonder uh in the next like five moves at some point, and Han's gonna lose this game, I think. Like Bishop B7 is apparently already just close to winning for white. And of course Magnus plays it, obviously. Get rook B8, Bishop A6. Let me refresh it because for some reason it's not it's not just live updating. Um Seriously, how does Magnus do this? The way he does this is that basically Hans at a certain point, he just he he lost control for one move, and then he I think somewhere around here Hans realized that he had thrown the advantage and he wasn't able to reset mentally, and then just a couple more imprecise moves, and just like that, it's equal and then better. Yeah, Hans is not gonna be very happy. He's not gonna be happy at all after this game. Because this is really demoralizing. Like, think about this as a, as like a serious chess player. Like, just think about it as a serious chess player. I'm sorry if I'm eating while I talk. Um but as a serious chess player, like, what more can you ask for? Magnus plays an, a plays an absolute garbage opening, total rubbish nonsense. It's plus three, no development even, and you can't win that against him. Then what? What even? What even are you doing with your life? Kind of. That's the problem. That's the problem with this. Is that basically it's like it's just so demoralizing. Because if you can't even win with this, then what? What? When are you ever going to win? Yeah, when are you going to win? Uh, maybe in another five years, yeah. Imagine what he says in the interview. I mean, uh, it's, it's going to be an explosion. Yeah. A3 itself was not bad, but the way Magnus played the opening was like just a pure in-your-face disrespectful opening. And and still, like it's minus, it's like minus three, like it's just lost. And Hans just completely bungles it. He trades the queens for no reason at all. And just like that, yeah, it's uh, brutal. Let me refresh it to make sure we're live. Absolutely brutal. I mean, H4 looks pretty obvious, although there is knight d4 maybe. Like, knight d4 to hit f3 and maybe go to f5, potentially. So we'll see. Uh, now, the new reason for Magnus to play chess now that championship doesn't matter. I'm completely demoralized and he wrote other top players will to play the game. Very possible. Yeah, very possible. Can I show my teeth? Oh, did something get stuck in between them again? Uh, if you go h4, b5, there's bishop a5, I believe. It's one of the moves. Maybe not the only one, but one of the ways. Um, this shows Magnus is a really good player and everyone else is a bad player in a way. Yeah, the time advantage is what's most brutal because there's no simplification even. Like, white is the, the two Bs and and the clock and the pawn. Like, literally every advantage possible. We're going to do red a little bit later on, you guys. A little bit later on. But, yeah. We'll, we'll do red a, a bit later. Um, Magnus has the pawn and compensation. Exactly. Yeah. The best player in the world is obviously Magnus. Now the thing is here for Magnus, he's got so much time. And it's funny that as soon as he thinks, he actually makes a blunder here, apparently. I still think he's going to win though. I still think he's going to win this game. Yeah. Board is updating. Yeah, because now Rook C2 runs into Bishop D3. Bishop A6 is a nice touch by Magnus. And I think... Let me refresh to make sure we're, we're live. But I think now White's probably winning. Yeah, Rook B C8 is a huge blunder. This is such a nice little tickle by Magnus. Because now on Rook C2, just Bishop D3. And if you go anywhere else, your Knight is really, really loose here. Yeah, it's a nice little tickle by him.
Yeah, I, I think uh, Magnus is well on its way to a, a dub again. I, th I think it's on its way to a dub. It says draw. No, it's uh, it's much better for white. Rook C5 is an impossible move to play here because there's Bishop E3. I mean, it's just impossible. Uh, this looks loose too. You have too much stuff on the D file. Oh, maybe Knight of uh, Rook D3. Yeah, this looks pretty bad. Okay, H4 maybe. Oh, wait, there's a trick. There's a Bishop A3 trick here. Wait a second. H4, Bishop A3 is a very sneaky trick here. Ah, uh, maybe not so fast here. Maybe there's still a little bit of a trick. Huh. Alirez is winning while well, I, I want to cover Hans's game. I mean, Hans is the future of American chess. So um, we're, we're going to cover this for right now. Do you think any of the younger talents can become a stronger world championship? Magnus, world champion? Maybe. I mean, who knows? Maybe Gukesh will be. Maybe, I mean, maybe Nihal. Maybe Arjun. You never really know. It's always possible. But Hans, I believe, is 20, 20 years old. No, maybe he's 19. Sorry. He's probably 18 or 19. Sorry. What am I saying? Um, but we'll see. I mean, a computer would obviously draw this quite easily. He's 19. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Um, I mean, H4 is the obvious move, but if Magnus is thinking here, he suddenly realizes that Bishop A3 is a problem. Does Hans remind me of my younger self? Maybe when I was much younger, like 16, 17. Rook takes d6 as a move. Uh, roasted? No, I mean, how's that? How's that? How's that roasting him? How's that roasting him? I don't. I, I must be missing the joke. He reminds me of my younger self of 12 or 13. Now that, however, is an insult. Yeah, that is an insult. Will I discuss my personal live stream? Why would I, you guys? I mean, if, if Lyric doesn't have to do it, by the way, big congrats, to Lyric, on becoming a father, or uh, like in a couple of days. Like, why? Why should I have to do that? Be serious. All right, I like a4, very tricky move. King e7, another blunder by Hans. Problem is with no time. I mean, taking this pawn, like everything just looks super, super loose here. So it's just very, very tough. So he goes king e7, which is the move that I think you play with no time. So you can play rook h8 next move. Yeah, and we'll see what happens. Point of a4 is to just avoid bishop takes, bishop takes a3. That's all it does. Market's suddenly selling off. Um, are they? Are they though? I mean, I see that we're down, but Walmart's still bigly green. Home Depot's still bigly green. I don't know. I mean, Meta and Google are down, but they're not like down a lot. Knight f4 apparently a blunder. I don't know why. What King f1? Knight e6, and then you probably can do something. Ah, uh, because probably now you have a5. This just loses the rooks. There's no longer the check. The king's on f1. That's probably why this is bad. Um. Uh, would you say he's very cocky? I mean, being confident is one thing, but straight up arrogance or thoughts. I think it's part of Hans's. Uh, it's just how Hans is. I mean, it's just. I think it's part of his thing. I don't think he actually is that cocky, but I think it's part of his way of trying to like intimidate people and sort of like act very confident and make people think that he he thinks he's really good. Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> Do I think in a few years physical cash will no longer be a thing? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's it was actually kind of it is a little bit unnerving because when I um when I went to Walgreens maybe like last week just to get some batteries, it was very unnerving that like they literally say like you can't pay in cash. We have a cash shortage. Um, so I don't know, but when I see things like that, it is it is a little bit unnerving. It is. It definitely is unnerving. I will say that. Move to Europe? Why would I ever move to Europe? All right. Um, on the checks, probably King F2, maybe King G3 next move. <laughs> I 
a free hospital? Yeah, you guys, that's a that's another typical myth. Um, it's a typical myth that people people think, which is not true, by the way. Yeah, a lot of people in Europe do do pay for some some form of private health insurance. Just to be clear, for all the people who think that somehow it's like it's free, everything's great. When you go to the three places in France and Italy, I'll, I'll just use those two examples. You're you're waiting in a long line for a lot of time. So, okay, um, this must be losing somehow. I don't know why. Bishop d3, maybe? Um, should be something. I see the bar just went to zeros, but it's just calculating. Um, maybe rookie four, f5, then rookie one or rookie three back. He just wants to do the stack on the e file here. Typical ignorant American answer. What's ignorant about the fact that I've been to these places? I'm literally seen lines at places with free, with free, uh, free basically consultations. Like I'm saying that from personal experience, having seen it literally with my own two eyes. I'm not just. It's not like I read some newspaper and come up with that, you guys. So, so thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for the assumption that somehow I don't know what I'm talking about. Am I going to TwitchCon? I might go to TwitchCon. Yeah, I might go to TwitchCon. I must be a fan of Andrew Tate. Not a fan at all, you guys. Not a fan at all. Yeah. Lesson of the day, clock is part of the game. Indeed, clock is very much a part of the part of the game, you guys. Absolutely. All right, Rook C5. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You're getting uh you're getting forked by the bishop. And actually, that sounds really inappropriate. Sorry about that. Uh, Bishop e5 wins the game. Sorry. I should clarify what I said. Now, Bishop b4, and there's a pin here instead. Um, excuse my language. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Yeah, <laughs> excuse me that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. It's okay we're not kids anymore. <laughs> there are many ways I could respond to that. Um many ways I could respond to that yeah all right let's keep going um yeah okay 96 for d1 um yeah this is just over okay um I finished in third place in title Tuesday <laughs> uh Magnus is gonna win this game rookie one or rookie actually wait rookie one there is rook h4 so maybe just a5 even just a5 a6 keep it very simple uh the eval bar how is uh how is that inappropriate because there is this thing called a certain church and certain people have done some very very uh wrong things over the years so it's yeah let's leave it at that okay I think a5 probably is the move here yeah I allowed a three-fold against Bordnik unfortunately otherwise I probably would have finished second on tie break All right, probably a5 here next move um yeah this is a chest-based stockfish it's a little bit uh yeah see what happens here thank you so much to west coast xtx ghoul for the three thank you lucas zuniga for the two and big cho for the three months thank you so much to z phoenix for the four months as well appreciate it um <clears throat> Yeah, I see there are a lot of people getting annoyed now, so I'll, I'll just avoid being Hassan for the moment. Um, but yeah, it's, it's what it is, you guys. It's what it is. I watch your games uh, with Top G Senior, cool stuff. But do you really expect me to believe his name was Emery? Yeah, his name was Emery, not Emeru. Emery. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, apparently this is losing plot probably rookie one or rookie one a5 is good i mean everything wins here for white it's just a matter of time progress on each no i haven't yeah stick to chess that's why we're here yeah but i mean like i said at the end of the day i'm not going to pretend that you know that I, I don't have opinions i will say that the rook d1 king e5 played uh f4 maybe is a move maybe king g3 is a move he goes f4 I assume it's going to be king e4 and you just roll this bad boy up the board with a5 or wait king e4 maybe king g3 king g3 to threaten checkmate you're threatening like a very funky checkmate here like some rookie one thing um so maybe that's right yeah Hans is gonna have some interesting comments I think king g3 and king e3 might be the only move 
Because if you move the knight, there's this this nice fork. If you move the knight here, there's this nice fork. I think I think you have to. So it goes bishop f1, interest. Oh, very sneaky. Because again, your knight has no squares. Although maybe you can go to e6. Because again, these two squares, you got you, there's a, there's a fork. I mean, yeah, this is very hard to play for black. In fact, I think Magnus is gonna win this game in like one or two moves. And that's a good move also. It's just a bad thing if you've never actually lived there, generalizing opinion. I've spent a lot of time in Europe, you guys. A lot of time. Not just for tournaments. I never lived in Europe, but I spent a lot of time there. Like, you guys think that what, I took like a two-week trip and I'm making a judgment off of two weeks? I mean, probably in the last decade, I would say on average, I probably spent three months every year at least in Europe. At least three months. Every single year. Um... So it's at three times time. So 30 months at least in Europe in the last decade, at least. Um, but hey, whatever. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, it's hilarious. Um, do I, do I like, uh, do, do, do I like, uh, do I like Europe? I mean, there, there are good things. There are good things in Europe. Um, there, there are plenty of good things. Um, but no. I mean, probably the, the, the couple of things, I mean, what I would say about Europe that, that is, is good relative to the US, one of the main things that I actually really like about Europe is, um, honestly, there are a lot of these like small businesses, small towns where you have like really, really good food. Uh, much better than the U.S. It doesn't really exist in the same kind of way anymore, especially because, you know, the the, the whole indus industry, shall we say. Um, so there are things like that that are really, that are, that are really, really good that I will always like. Like the small towns in Italy and France are amazing. They're, they're just amazing, straight up. Um, <clears throat> so there are, there are good things. There definitely are good things about Europe as well. Uh, check the Prague game. Okay, sure. Let's go. Let's go to Prague's game. Prague is playing against um, Anish. Apparently, you guys said this is a draw. Why? <clears throat> Apparently, this was winning. Wait. Look at this. Uh, Rook H five. Rook B five. One two three four. One two three. I'm thinking about this end game. <clears throat> okay, we get back here. Wait. So what was the win? There was some win. I don't see it right off. Oh, oh my God. Oh, it's just, oh, it's this little dance move. King G4, you play the little dance move. You just sidestep the pawn. I need you didn't see this. That's why I didn't play it. You, you just do the little dance. You just side sidestep it with King G4. And now you still win the pawn. And it's a very easy win. Oh, that's a nice idea that he missed. Um, Actually, wait, that was Prague who missed it? I was, I was about to say, like, I, I could see Anish missing it, but Prague missing it? Although, apparently, we just got a big blunder by Magnus. Or not Magnus, sorry. Anish, now it's losing again. Um, but all right, let's go back. Okay, White is a great pawn here. Magnus about to win the game. Well, of course, hang around for the interviews with uh, Hans and Magnus afterwards to see how it goes. Man, Hans, I mean, I don't know what Hans is going to say after this. Yeah, I mean, you can even just go Bishop buffs. <laughs> I mean, H5, look at the wide peepos go. Look at the wide peepos. <clears throat> H5, H6. I mean, Bishop F5 wins too, but just the wide peepos. And it's beautiful. You go h6, takes, takes here, and then bishop h5, cover the square. And you're just pushing that bad boy up the board, making a queen. And 97, bishop h5. Oh, I didn't play play so great, but I'm, you know, I'm very happy with the fact that I, I came back. 
The uh, the first game was uh, was really uh, poor. I was completely outplayed. Uh, so I mean, obviously after that it couldn't have gone better. And in the last game, there seems <laughs> Magnus is like waiting for a reaction here. He's like he's waiting for the he's waiting for the he's waiting for the uh, the, the guy who's interviewing to like laugh or, or, or find it funny, and then he just like he doesn't laugh at all. He's, that, that's so good. Uh, poor, I was completely outplayed. Uh, so I mean, I love the silence after here. After that, it couldn't have gone better. <laughs> that's so that's so good. He's he's literally waiting for the guy to, to laugh or have some reaction, and he doesn't laugh. You see, Magnus, he like he he looks at him a second time, with, like the eye contact. That's so funny. That's so so funny. Hans, it was a. Uh... Topsy Turvy game today went up and down. How would you summarize it yourself? The game or the match? The match. <laughs> oh, you know what's really good about this part? This is literally Hans. Like, the, 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 the guy is not a chess player. You can tell very clearly. He's not a chess player. And, like, he, he just uses the wrong word. And Hans is like, he, he's like, that, that's, that, that's actually, yeah, that's, a little, that's kind, of, kind of bad. I mean, because this guy is just like, he doesn't play chess. He's, he's just, he, he meant the match. We said game. He's Norwegian, like. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Well, um, uh, the first game was obviously was obviously good, and uh, the, the the last three, obviously, in this last game I didn't need to lose. I could obviously have made a, a draw at any moment. I had to win, and uh, the yeah. What what is, what is this just, accent? What is this accent? Like, come on, Hans. Like, seriously, what is this accent? What is this accent? Jeez uncalled for like with the white pieces i should not be taking on any risk and uh it was just really really poor game with white because like when you win the first game with black and you have two whites like it it, it goes back to the nor it goes back to normal again there like you see it like for a second there it goes back to normal and then it gets back into the accent like it goes back to normal like just classic classic american english you really should be at least getting to a tiebreaker, like, uh, so... Okay. I had this nice game, but, uh, haven't been able to show consistency. Do you feel as though Magnus is really improving his level after the first game? No, no, I just think the level of the first game was... Uh, well, okay. He definitely improved his level. Yeah, I can tell you what it is, actually. I'll tell you what it is. It's when he talks at the normal pace, his, he he doesn't have the accent. When he just talks normally. He doesn't have the accent. But when he slows it down, that's when he, that's when it suddenly becomes a random accent, which I don't like. When he's talking fast, it's, it goes back to normal English. So it's just kind of bizarre. Even if you look at the third game, I, uh, the, I when he speaks fast, again, it sounds American again. And I just got into time pressure and ruins. So I don't think it was in great form, especially <laughs> in these two black games. Like <laughs> he literally proves the point there. He literally for like those past thirty seconds, he starts talking really fast, and there's no accent. It's just typical American English. What is this? Yeah, when he starts talking fast, of course there's no accent because he's talking like he normally would, like like he, sh like I mean, like he does. So bizarre, just so weird. Yeah, it's like when he starts talking at a normal pace, there's no accent. It's just classic American English. It's just bizarre. Yeah. Like uh, I can, he was just uh, much okay. When the first black game and then the third game, he's like much much worse with white. Um, so okay, the, uh, the score doesn't really reflect how I played. It's just the. Uh, I was just choking at the every critical moment and mismanaging my time as well. So obviously after winning the first game, like uh, this is certainly not ideal. Magnus was saying how you explained that A-pawn to him afterwards. The most shocked person in the room at that point seemed to be you when Magnus played the bishop in front instead, because you actually looked like you got a second life right there. Yeah, well, I was given I was given many lives today, right? Like I'm given a free life by winning the first game, and then the second game I get an opening advantage. I, I was I was given many many chances today to 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 avoid this outcome, but uh, unfortunately I failed at every junction. Do you think you're going to come back stronger tomorrow? Well, uh, it'll be a bit easier against someone else. Good luck to you. Thank you. The big so so weird so weird. <laughs> I don't know what the, what are they referring to though? Cause I actually, I'm confused. Like, what are they referring to when they talk about a bishop in front of the pawn? I like, I'm confused. Um, wait, so they're saying, oh, they're saying a six here. They're saying a six cause knight c7, rook c7 traps the knight. So they're saying a six instead of bishop a six. He was saying bishop a six wasn't the best move, I guess. I mean, 
I guess. I mean, it's still kind of weird, but anyway. Okay. I mean, it wasn't... I mean, everything, everything was good. I think actually what Magnus said was kind of okay. But yeah, so that's what they meant.